So I don't know about you guys, but these past few games I've made for Discord have all kind of looked and felt the same. I mean, I'm still using embeds and Unicode characters to display the game board and the game states. And honestly, I mean, yeah, this is Snake, but at the same time, couldn't it be better? So this time we're going to try and break this past usage of embeds and go past it and try something new. Today we'll be attempting to make chess in Discord, however, not just any chess, we are going to make it with images. Last video I explained all the different ways you could get input in from the user to actually play the game. This time around I'm going to talk about the visual outputs and the ways you can display the game and the board. Now there are four that I can think of. The first, which we have already been seeing and using, is a embed. That's what I've been using in the past few games. It's just kind of in chat, embed, all cleaned up using Unicode and all that type of stuff. The other way which you can output stuff is just via text in the chat. And this is not quite embed, it's a little bit more simpler, but if you're making like a text-based adventure game, this is what you would use here. The third, which you're using this week, is images. Now, Discord can actually allow you to upload images into an embed or into chat just via attaching a file to the message you send, and that will display that image in the Discord chat as is to allow you to visually represent the game. The fourth I'm not going to talk about because it's something that I would like to do in a future video and for that case I'd like to kind of keep it a bit secret. If I pull it off it'd be really cool and you'll see the future so if you aren't sub do so now because you'll be able to stay up to date with what I do and see that video when it comes out in the future. But those are the four current types of visual outputs that I can think of. Now to do this however we need a way to be able to dynamically create the board and image from the current game state. Now from this because I'm using JavaScript I can actually use a library which gives me the ability to use regular HTML5 canvases and use that whole system as is just in JavaScript without the HTML itself. So I began on a JS fiddle just going through and trying to create a board visually via canvas and get all the things and pieces and board layout all done and complete and then move on from there. All the chess pieces were made via just straight up canvas, draw lines, all that type of stuff. No images were used, so yes, the pieces could look a lot better than they do, but at the end of the day, the point of the game wasn't the creation or the look and feel of the pieces, it was just the fact that we could have a much better looking image than the previous game boards were just Unicode characters, so I didn't spend a ton of time on this, but I still wanted it to look better than it would if we had just used an embed. So after getting all the pieces rendering on the game board, it was time to take that code from the JS Fiddle and move it over to my actual bot. Once there, I tweaked the code a little bit to actually use a canvas from the library I'm using as opposed to the canvas from HTML5, and then transferring that image that it draws to a buffer, which then gets attached as an image to Discord in the embed, and then sent to Discord and displayed. I lastly also added reactions, that way you could then select the actual location on the game board where you wanted to move the piece or the piece you wanted to move. These reactions were 1 through 8 and A through H, the corresponding grid location of the board. And after that we had the shell of our game all finished and ready for the actual logic and movement to be added. The rest of the programming for this game was all done live on my Twitch page, twitch.tv slash jerkydev. Feel free to go check me out there and give me a follow. I do some of these projects live on stream there, so definitely feel free to check me out. Anyways, we would soon figure out that all this work we have done was all for naught, as we would soon discover that Discord limits the images and you are not able to edit or change an image once it's been uploaded in a message. This would throw the entire game off and essentially kill the idea here because in order for this game to work, we actually need to be able to change the image to reflect the game state because we want this to be all self-contained and nice and easy packaged and not spam the chat with a bunch of different messages to have the board state change. So unfortunately, the game would fail here and would essentially be given up if it weren't for one user in chat. Which image and update every few seconds, so something like that should work. Oh, you're saying to use a URL and use a URL. Ooh, it's a good idea. I would need then host the bot. I mean, it would need to be hosted somehow, but it's not a bad idea, noob. Because I believe you're right. If I do like an image like this, Carlos's Geizo, it's like this. So that is an embedded image, which can't change. But if I do something like that, so that should show the image. 
And then if I change it to Carlos's first image, I'm using your images to test Carlos, so. Uh, so if I do this, edit. Wait a minute. Noob. Wait a minute. And with that, the idea was officially saved. Now, if you don't fully know what's going on here, let me give you a brief explanation. So what we were previously trying to do was actually upload an image as a full on file attachment to a message and display it that way. Discord, however, does not allow you to change or edit those attachments once they have been sent. So we are unfortunately unable to update our game board because we couldn't update the image. What is being proposed here though is another Discord feature of when you post a link in a chat that then routes to a video or to an image in this case, it will display a preview of that image below the link you posted. But what is the biggest thing here is that if you change the image of that message, the preview message that is sent below it also changes along with that edit. So in theory, if we were to create a URL, which we then return the game board from, we can then edit that image, edit the URL that's there, and effectively change the game board to reflect the current state while all keeping it in within one single message. What this means, however, is we now have to effectively rewrite our entire current code to use this newfound change, starting with the game board coming from a remote URL. What we decided to do was to essentially include the entire game board state on the URL when we sent it. So a parameter over the URL would include the entire game board state along with some other stuff such as what the current selected tile is. And that would be then sent to the server which would read it in an API, generate the game board via an image and send that back which would then get rendered out onto our Discord channel and shown as the game board state from a URL which we can then edit to change the game board state which would then get re-rendered on the back end sent back from the URL, and again, then updated in the Discord chat. For the backend API, I decided to leverage my current new API that I'm writing for my website and just personal use to include an endpoint, which when we give it the game board state and some other stuff, like I said, it would then generate this and send the game board back as an image from the URL. This is all done in Java, which luckily is not JavaScript. However, the current generation graphics are actually very similar in Java and JavaScript. So it was actually pretty easy to essentially copy the JavaScript I existently had and just port it over to be Java in the way that I need to do it in Java. So after lots of copying, pasting, porting, and removal of code from the JavaScript guide, we now had a game board being rendered off a given URL that we could then paste in the Discord chat that would then post the picture of the game board below it and all was saved. One thing I did forget to mention that was also added during that whole chaos was the ability to select a piece and then move it on the game board. This movement was not checked at all, but you could at least change the position of a piece given the input you gave. So the next thing to do was naturally to validate the movements. Validating all the movements of the pieces actually wasn't too difficult given that in chess, all the movements are very strictly enforced or there are strict rules on how pieces can move. So simply using this chart here from Wikipedia shows all the chess possible moves in each piece. And we just had to follow this and implement all these rules into the game and validate the movement of each piece, which again, wasn't all that too bad. Now that all the movement of the pieces were validated and we had a simple error message, if you could move a piece in the way you wanted to, we actually just have chess. Like there's honestly nothing really else. I mean, you can now play chess, albeit by yourself, the core game is there. Only thing left now is to actually add an opponent. Now, last time with Connect 4, I added it to where you just played either yourself or someone else in chat. This time I wanted to kind of step it up and try and make a very simple AI that you could play against. Now, unfortunately, while I know the rules of chess, I am a very bad chess player. And normally creating an AI is pretty difficult, especially for chess. The fact that I am also not very good at chess probably means that I shouldn't be the one developing the AI. That being said, I did what every good programmer does and I just used someone else's code. So big thanks here to Lori Hartika. Hopefully I'm saying your name right. Uh, this person has a blog post as well as GitHub code on, on a very simple chess AI up. So I will link that down below for you to check that out to actually read about it and read what it's doing. But I will try and summarize it here to get the point across of what we're actually doing. 
Now this AI is actually not very good. It's, it's really honestly bad, but what it does is it uses the Minimax algorithm. Now, if you know what Minimax is, essentially it is a game idea or a game AI where you try and do as many moves as possible to find the best move. The way this works is you start with the current board position, you then map out every single move you could take from this position, and then given all those positions you now have, you then map out every single move you can make from those, and the tree just keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger until ideally you reach the end where the game has ended, and from there you work your way back up the tree, finding the best possible move to get you to what your desired outcome is, which in this case is the computer winning the game. Now unfortunately this is not very practical as chess itself has billions, trillions, or even more options and moves you can make at a given time. So doing a minimax algorithm on this is very, very, very computational heavy. So we can employ some different things and some tricks to improve this algorithm and make it a little more efficient. The biggest is implementing a depth size. The depth size is simply just only lets your game go a certain move, amount of moves ahead. So in this case, I have implemented a depth of four. So our AI here can only think four moves ahead. It can't do any more. This limits the computation by just a ton. There are more things that our AI does employ to go faster and be a little more efficient, such as alpha beta pruning, but I will leave that all to the blog post. So if you are interested in that, go read that and check that out as that'll be much better than I can explain. But essentially, we now have an AI that I can implement and given what the GitHub code is, I can then use that change it over to use my system because of course I'm using a different system than their AI does. Theirs actually uses a chess JavaScript engine which I don't have. So once I implement their AI, flip it over to mine, we now have an AI in our bot that you can play against. Like I said though, this AI is definitely far from anything that's kind of challenging complex, but it's something. So. With that being said, we now have chess. We now have chess that you can play in Discord using what I would definitely call a hack of this. But at the end of the day, I'm happy with it. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed this video. I am only planning to do one more video on a Discord game, assuming that it actually pans out. I would like to keep doing this series at the same time. I feel like I am just doing the same thing over and over again, and I don't want to keep doing that. So I feel like I should end this series at some point. So. I do have one more video planned eventually, it won't be next week or anything, but it might come in the future. But if you guys do have some any other games you'd like to see me do, or if you'd like to make see me do any other games in weird or wacky environments, feel free to leave a suggestion. I am open to them. I have one idea of making a game in a different kind of engine per se that I think will be really cool. So at any rate, hopefully you guys enjoyed. I'll see you guys all next time. Peace out.